<laughs> All right, I think we had a question back here. This is for everyone. Which players should we look for this year have a big impact on the team's uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think there are the obvious ones. We know that Lins we know that is going to be good, and Kane and those guys. But uh, I think we're all looking forward to watching two guys develop at this level, and that's Brandon Belt and uh, and, Cro and uh, Crawford. Crawford. So those two guys. You know, it's going to be another interesting story in the uh, Giants bullpen. Last year when. Uh, Brian Wilson went on the disabled list. He missed the last two months of the season. And Santiago Casilla, uh, he basically assumed that role of closer. Um, they split it up at first, but towards the end, he was the guy that pitched tonight. That's going to be an interesting dynamic as to how they set the bullpen up to get to Wilson. Uh, we understand Wilson looks fabulous, by the way, in great condition. And he says his arm is completely healed. There's no problems. Um, but he's going to have to show everybody in spring training that he can do what he did. And the other story is going to be this kid, Heath Hembry, that uh, went through the minor league system last year quickly. And he was a closer. And he throws 95 plus. Similar stuff to what you see Brian Wilson uh, have when he first got to the big league. So those are going to be stories that we're going to pay close attention to. I mean, spring training always has a number of these stories that are pretty neat bylines that you pay attention to. And uh, those are a couple of them right there. I, I agree with the. Uh, with type about Brandon Crawford especially, and, and, and I'm excited to see all these guys, but uh, I think the Giants, because their foundation is built on pitching, uh, have decided that let's get the best defense out there. Uh, Angel Pagan covers a huge amount of ground in center field. Uh, Melky Cabrera be a, a, a more than adequate left fielder, and uh, Nate Scherholz could be a gold lover in right field. Uh, Pablo could have been a gold glover third base last year, and I kept thinking, uh, maybe I'm not seeing this uh, the way everybody else is seeing it, but then they have these new defensive metrics where they try to define uh, how good a guy was and how many runs he saved versus the league average, and Pablo saved more runs than any third baseman in the National League last year. So uh, it's, it's not just you know the eyes, the, the numbers say that Pablo was that good. And Crawford, I think, is a gold glove caliber shortstop. And I think the Giants were torn between just getting him out there and forgetting about how he hit uh, and also saying, we don't want to set this guy back. He could have a long career here. So I think they, they didn't want to rush him and, and bring him along too quickly. But uh, I think that uh, Crawford showed some things with the bat late in the season that, that the Giants were, had worked on him with, uh, uh, worked with him on. And, and I think that uh, they saw enough there to say, Okay, I think Crawford can help us next year. And I didn't want to just leave it to chance to have Crawford in there for his, for his glove. And I had vowed I was going to go right up to Bochy this morning and tell him, Crawford's got to be in short every day, and that's it. I don't want to hear any other, any other stuff. And I walked up to Bochy, Bochy, come here, I need to talk to you. And I walked up to Bochy and I went... <laughs> Everything okay? <laughs> That's as far as I got with that uh, discussion. But, uh, I, I think he got the point. But I think he got the chance. I'm sure he got the point of that one. And we had a great first question over here. Do we have a question in the middle or over on the left side for the best broadcasters in baseball? All right, I'm going back over here. Can we pass the microphone to this young lady? Thank you, Cody. Hi, so I want to know how you perfected your home run call. Did it just come naturally or did you work on it? Oh, I don't think she's asking me, I think she's asking you guys. <laughs> you, do you have one? No. 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 <laughs> should I? Everyone should. Don't answer the guys that you work with this. in the morning? Yeah, you, you need. Alright, well, let's talk about your home run calls. Well, it's. It's really hard if you're going to start out in this business and you get a piece of paper and a pencil and you go, all right, now I'm going to figure out what my home run call is going to be. I mean, probably just doesn't work like that. And the fact that the end of my home run call is out of here, I, I'm not the first guy that's ever said that. I mean, there's probably 20 guys that say it now and there's probably 100 broadcasters that have had that as part of their, your, as part of their home run call. So it's it's not unique, but it's fun. I mean, and you know, you, you use it when you start out. People like it. 
And if they like it, then there's no sense in changing. So, it's probably not a home run call that you would use on a national scale. You know, John did all those years on ESPN. Because it's not a neutral call. <laughs> no, it's, no. It's, it's not? I would, I mean, you used it here, so when I was on a national game, I used it. Did you? I ripped you off, yeah. <laughs> Tells me I, now, I wanna, right? I just want to hear it. It's a, been a long winter with no baseball. I just want to hear one. You guys yeah. would <laughs> Let's act like... Do you want me to bat? Would that help? <laughs> let's, act, let's act like Kate is, is swinging. Ready? So, Kate, I'm going to tell you when to swing, okay? Okay. Go ahead. And the pitch to Kate. Swing and a miss! Oh. Shake it up! <laughs> kind of set myself up for that one. No again. ball A little bit. one strike. <laughs> and the next pitch to Kate. She hits it high. <laughs> she hits it deep. Woo! And she hits it to the wall. Oh! <laughs> she only gets a single. She wasn't running. <laughs> I went into my trot too soon, huh? Good swing and a miss, though. Way to go. <laughs> no, I mean, we're done. You. Uh -oh. <laughs> It's out of here. It was out of here. It's a three-part out of here. Out of here. It's out of here. It's like there's a little bit of New York in the middle. Out of here. Out of here. All right. All right. All right. Woo! I've been feeling we'll get a real home run call very, very soon. Now, uh, after a home run or a swing and a miss or whatever, then Kipe analyzes. <laughs> that would be Krug. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I always get them confused. Krug, Kite, whatever. You saw it, ladies and gentlemen, the end of this relationship. Oh, uh, oh the friendship part. I can't wait on. to go to work. <laughs> we do this every day. We laugh hard every day. And uh, you know, we miss Dave Fleming today, who is on assignment. Aww. He is a broadcasting basketball for ESPN, and uh, we miss him, but uh, we get to do this every day, and it is what we live for, and uh, and sometimes the offseason goes a little slow. We are ready for a baseball game, Kate. Now I want to know, even though you don't get to call it, do you have a home run call? Uh, you know, I, I've actually had to do a few innings of play-by-play -play in my right. career, and it's horrible. It's bad. <laughs> How bad Because I commiserate with the pitcher, you know? <laughs> Here's the pitch, and oh, he hung the curveball. I'm more concerned about what the pitcher did. It just doesn't work. Oh, yeah, home run. And the ERA just went up by four points, you know? It just doesn't work. And that's why he's the color man. Okay. <laughs> now, and I, I don't know if you, if you were doing that out of here. This is years and years ago. And we were in San Diego, the old ballpark in San Diego. And I told this story. I don't know. It was eight to nothing in this game. It was not a good game. And Kipe and I were working together on the radio. And I told this story about in the old days of Giants baseball, Russ Hodges had a home run call, tell it bye-bye, baby. And Von Simmons, tell it, tell it goodbye. And they had a third broadcaster that came in named Bill Thompson. And a disc jockey here in San Francisco, Gene Nelson, had a big contest on the radio to get Bill Thompson a home run call. Because he would just say, it's gone. And... They got all these candidates for it and whatnot. They had a vote, and the, the call that won was Pum Adios Mother. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill Thompson said he was very honored and whatnot, but uh, he d decided that discretion uh, was the better part of valor, and he declined to use it. So we tell the story, and then Kipe is doing a play-by-play, -play, and I don't know what... Jeff Kent, 30 seconds later, hits a home run, and Kite says, He hits it high. He hits it deep. Adios, mother. <laughs> and it's like, all I was trying to do is entertain John. And it was like, people at home are going, What the hell is going on? Right? And there was about 90 seconds of silence as these guys hit the kill switch, and they were shaking and laughing so hard. 
thought their radios had gone dead. It's, 